CNN's David Chalian is right there at the wall, which only means one thing. There is a new exclusive poll. David. Our final national poll of this 2024 race. And what does it show in this stable race? A tied race, dead heat among likely voters, 47% Harris, 47% Trump. It obviously doesn't get closer to that. And I wanna show you what this race has looked like over time. It has been remarkably stable. This goes all the way back to when Joe Biden was still running in August of last year. You saw it was a 47-46 race there. You see here, the red line, the Donald Trump line, he's never been behind outside the margin of error, statistically trailing in this race the entire time that we have polled this race. And we've been talking a lot about the gender gap in this race. Uh, it's a little smaller in our poll overall than we've seen in some other polling, but among likely voters, Harris is plus six, 50% to 44% with women, and Donald Trump is plus six, equally 51% uh, to 45% with men. That is a 12 point uh, gender. 44% with women. How much you wanna bet? I wonder, I wanna know what that looks like for white women. I wanna know what percentage of white women are voting for Donald Trump at the end of the process. Cause obviously uh, it's like 66% of the entire population is white. So when Donald Trump is still capturing 44% of the women vote, I wonder if he still hits above 50% for white women. I think a lot of women will be voting one way and hiding it for their husbands. I mean, dude, I, I, I'm not discounting that. I'm not discounting that at all. I will say this much. I think that is a dangerous thing to fantasize. Yeah. Now, this is a national poll, as yep. we have said until we're blue in the face and we'll continue to say, remind people that that is not how uh, presidents are chosen. It's by the Electoral College and in battleground states. However, what this poll is telling us is some of the reasons why this race is so close in those battlegrounds as well. What is some of what you're learning behind those numbers? Right. So you know, lots of people uh, on the Democratic side of the equation say, how could it be possible that it's tied? Why is Harris uh, not running away with this? Well, it's the environment that she's running in. We asked folks, uh, your financial situation over the past year, so today compared to a year now, a plurality, nearly half, 49% say they are worse off today financially than they were a year ago. 35% say they're about the same. Only 16% say they're better off. I'll also just say, we have Joe Biden at a low approval rating at 36% in this poll. Uh, we have the wrong track number. Seven out of 10 Americans say we're in the wrong uh, direction. Things aren't going well. It's a rough environment if you're running in the incumbent party. So what does that mean then? Why isn't Donald Trump running away with it if that's the environment? Well, here's one issue. Look at, do look at Kamala Harris's domination. The issue of abortion and reproductive rights, she is running a 21 point margin ahead of Trump on trust to handle that issue. Uh, a little bit uh, protecting democracy is an advantageous category for her. Trump still doing his best on immigration. He's got a 16 point lead over Harris on the economy, a 13 point lead, and on foreign policy, a 10 point lead. But that abortion and reproductive rights number, that's one of the reasons. I kept trying to debate my professor the shy Trump voter won't be significant of an effect because they're not as shy anymore, but he kept saying it's still going to impact the election. What do you think? I think your professor is wrong. I don't think that they're shy Trump voters necessarily, but they are Trump voters that uh, might not be getting polled. What does that mean? They're not shy. They're just uh, not from the normal avenues where, uh, I mean, they're not shy. They're low or mid propensity voters. That's it. Um, I think that that is what the real problem here is which pollsters uh, in an effort not to repeat 2016 have tried to combat against that by basically weighing the scales by at least two points in trump's direction it's not necessarily that they're shy trump voters it's that they are low or mid propensity voters that have a likelihood of voting for donald trump now, the problem with low propensity voters is, are they going to vote or are they not going to vote? That's why there's a lot of conversations around Trump potentially winning the popular vote and still losing the, uh, the, the uh, electoral college. If turnout is omega high in Florida, right, because all of the crypto nuts are just going crazy in Florida or in red states, but 
his turnout in um, his his conspiracy guys in like Pennsylvania or Michigan or all these other places are not actually uh, coming out to vote, then, you know, he's cooked. He loses. He wins the popular vote and then loses the uh, electoral college. I think the country's on the wrong track for many structural reasons that transcend administrations. I'm still voting for Kamala. I honestly don't see this question as a good predictive indicator. Don't think it was in 2012 famously. What do you mean? What is a good indicator? Then the Republican Party may actually want to get rid of the electoral college. Yeah, that'd be really funny. What outcome is funnier, Trump victory or Kamala victory? I think neither is funny. I think both are shitty outcomes. One is like maybe marginally, maybe, maybe marginally like putting a pause and not even necessarily a pause, but just like slowing down the acceleration towards fascism, but like not dramatically. At least you could make the argument that you were putting a pause on the acceleration towards fascism in previous elections, but that's gone now. Um, uh, in terms of like, uh, in terms of what is going on, uh, in American foreign policy, that's bipartisan, that's uniparty. It's not going to stop. It's just only going to get worse. But, um, the, the avenues in which the democratic party can like offer some level of protection to marginalized communities is also getting smaller and smaller. They just drop the, they, they dropped immigrants in its entirety. They're like, nah, you guys are done. We're done with you. Bro, you can't call Trump a fascist and they say it's marginally better. I don't know you don't support her, but Trump is a racist fascist pig and it's a considerable difference. Dog, I call Trump a fascist and I despise Kamala Harris for literally adopting the fascist ideology of the actual fascist. That's my problem. Time and time again, I have repeated that this argument is not simply just about Gaza, even though that is a valid argument to make. You can't even launch an effective attack that Trump is a fascist when you have adopted half of his policies. You cannot launch a significant line of attack that Trump is a fascist when you're doing photo ops with Liz Cheney. This is the issue. This is the real problem. Dick Cheney is worse than Donald Trump, by the way. Like his impact on the world was worse than Donald Trump. I don't know what Trump will do in his second term, but I know what Dick Cheney did in two terms. And what he did was way worse. The Bush administration and its impact on uh, the entire planet, the Bush administration and its impact on American domestic politics was far worse than Donald Trump's. This does not make Donald Trump a good person. Not even a little bit. This raises who you hate less. Every American election is who you hate less. The problem that I have with the Democrats in general, and it's kind of funny because like we're currently talking about how much I despise the Republicans. And then you ask me to talk about Democrats. And then of course, I'm going to be honest and start shitting on the Democrats. But the problem here is my, my hatred for the Democratic Party is that they do not launch a real are, they do not launch a real fight against the damage that Republicans contribute to American society. They don't do it. They're not doing it for one reason or another. They're just simply not doing it. And that's so f frustrating to me. I'm like, I'm the one who actually hates the Republicans, not you. You don't hate Republicans. If you're like so many Democrats just constantly behave like they actually don't have a problem with the Democrats, uh, Republicans at all. Yeah. I can't believe like like Kamala Harris saying like I like the wall. It's a good policy is is so stupid. It's so fucking stupid. I still think Harris wins this, but at some point we should discuss how two months of outreach to Republicans produced no benefit whatsoever. All it did was stop her ascent and cap her support at 49%. This is correct. If only there was someone who if only there was someone who was yelling about this for months and months and months. That hoodie is very cool, Hassan. Where is it from? Oh, um, it's from my own website, ideology.shop. That's right, ideology.shop. Thank you for asking, especially at the top of the hour when there's an ad break coming, which is ideology.shop. You can go and also purchase your own politician's hoodie there. That's right, union made in the United States of America, okay? This is the election collection out now.